Now, yesterday on this programme, we talked about the potential benefits and dangers of artificial intelligence. Well, today, the Minister of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, Dr. Bosun Tijani, appears to have moved to strengthen that ecosystem. At a meeting earlier with Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation team, we're told that Dr. Tijani signed an agreement to establish the Nigerian AI scaling hub, backed by about seven point five million dollars in funding and expertise from the Gates Foundation. According to a tweet by Dr. Tijani, the initiative will help accelerate the application of AI in healthcare, agriculture and education sectors that are clearly critical in terms of their impact on ordinary Nigerians. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the Minister of Communications, Innovation and Digital Economy, Dr. Bosun Tijani. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Oh, pleasure. Pleasure. And thank you for taking the time to be here, because obviously, as we can see from the picture, I mean, you had a long day. Mm -hmm. But why, by way of opening the discussion, tell us about this major initiative that was launched today. Yeah. Um, no, as you can imagine, uh, Nigeria is, uh, we've been described as a country of potentials for, for too long. Uh, and I think one of the agenda of this government is ensuring that we can actually move from just promise to actual performance. I think that's what, that's what this government is all about. Mm. So when we came in, we figured that on, on two hands, one, that uh, artificial intelligence, uh, which is now a phenomenon that no nation can shy away from, uh, has significant opportunity to help raise productivity across key sectors in Nigeria. You know, productivity has been a major challenge for mm. us, whether you look at agriculture, you know, education, healthcare. Productivity has been a major ch challenge. But we've seen the opportunity for AI to actually help us improve on how we do things in our critical sector. That's one. Then the second is that this is a phenomenon that nations can't shy away from. And with our team in youth population, it makes so much sense for us as a nation to position, to give opportunities to these young people, to participate in the global phenomenon, which is why the country went ahead strongly, uh, like we've done across so many other sectors, building significant foundational infrastructure to ensure that we can have a national AI strategy for Nigeria, mm. which is now being dubbed to be one of the best on the African continent. The UN just released uh, a list of top 60 artificial intelligence countries in the world and guess who is on that list? Nigeria. And the Oxford University also just released another, another list, which is focused on how government is prepared and the vision for AI in countries all over the world. Right. We're rated 100% for vision. So what we've seen is a lot of young people, tech entrepreneurs, building uh, artificial intelligence solutions. But we know that globally, AI can't scale in any country without government participating. Uh, and what this AI scaling orb is meant to do is to support those who have managed to build prototypes of their solutions. So these are not just ideas, prototypes. But they are at a point where you can accelerate those prototypes to a point where they can scale and mm. add value to society. So Mr. Gates, of course, I was fortunate a few weeks before my appointment. He was in Nigeria. I hosted him with a lot of young uh, tech innovators uh, from all over Africa. And now just midterm into this administration is back and is supporting the work we're doing at the ministry to ensure that we can identify the solutions who can help us change things in agriculture. I'll give you an example. In agriculture, the number of uh, companies that the government is backed that will mm. benefit from this program. There's one uh, that has built something uh, called early detection for diseases in agriculture. And they focused on tomatoes to start with. Uh, there's a disease that is called the tuta uh, I think it's called Absoluta, uh, which is a common disease in the north and in the Benue area. Right. So they've built a solution that will help farmers detect uh, earlier on in the process whether those diseases will come, the infestation is coming, and what they should be doing to treat it. We've seen some uh, AI models that is being built by some of the people we've supported that is focused on, again, how do we manage the uh, release of the dam water that mm. is typically happening between Cameroon and Nigeria. And how can government better prepare to manage those situations so that they don't, they don't take us by surprise? We've seen a lot in healthcare. For instance, for AI to work in healthcare, there's something that is called imaging, uh, archiving imaging that AI needs to pull so that it, when AI sees patterns for certain diseases, it can quickly update you. Right. For most of the diseases that are unique to black people, we don't have enough library of images that AI can leverage. 
those things are now being built in Nigeria and they will support how we can apply AI, but also globally how other people can leverage AI for black people. Well. And of course, so Bill Gates is putting up money for these things, Absolutely. which rather helps, doesn't it? It does, it does, yes. Um, but, but beyond the things, I mean, th th these sound very significant and very well targeted mm -hmm. because those are critical areas, mm -hmm. obviously. But, I mean, we had a discussion on this program just yesterday on the dangers of artificial intelligence, mm. especially as 2020, because a lot of people don't actually see the bits that you're talking about, Absolutely. which is why it's good that you came to talk yeah, about yeah. them. I mean, people think of, you know, mock-ups on the internet. <laughs> when you say something, somebody twists Twitch, it, yeah, yeah. and it looks like something else. Yeah. And we're talking about the dangers of artificial intelligence, especially as 2027 draws near. Mm -hmm. And we are starting to see that dangerous misuse Absolutely. of AI technology to distort facts, deceive people, and so on. How is the government putting guardrails around it to protect the public from bad outcomes without limiting the kind of innovation that you're talking about. I think you've picked the right phrase, mm. which is guardrails, right? Which, which is what, uh, for technologies, we believe that is extremely important if you're going to allow AI to thrive in any society. You know what we did when we are building our national AI strategy? It was actually to develop an AI model to find the best Nigerians in artificial intelligence mm. all over the world. So what the model did was to take all academic publication in AI stripped them apart and extracted the names of the authors. And we have a name library that tells us if your name is a Nigerian name or not. So AI is able to identify the authors of top rated academic publications in the world that are focused on AI. So we found close to 5,000 of those people. Mm -hmm. and we whittled down to 100 and we published the names of these 100 people. We got a lot of Nigerians working in artificial intelligence within uh, the private sector. And we brought about 150 of them to Abuja last year. These were the people who drafted the national AI strategy for Nigeria. And in that, in that strategy, a major element is around trust and ethics. Mm. Right? How do we support the development of AI in a manner that we encourage more people to participate? But government is also able to put an eye on what's being done and how it's being regulated without putting the ordinary people at risk. You know, right. This is something we've empowered. Uh, you know, we, have, we now have a national AI uh, and robotics center, which is part of uh, uh, NIDA, and for the first time in the history of the center, they are now also public, publishing academic journals. They have experts there who truly understand what artificial mm. intelligence is, how it should be guided. And now uh, our national uh, digital economy bill, which has gone through first reading at the National Assembly, has elements in it in terms of how we are going to ensure that the development of AI in Nigeria doesn't leave our people at risk. But the most important thing when we talk about risk in AI for me is actually enlightenment that we must do whatever we need to do to ensure that people are educated right. about the dangers and how to identify these things online, which is why you know in Nigeria today we run the largest technology talent accelerator program anywhere in the world. There's no country that is training 3 million technical talent in the world today. Mm. And this is something that has been extremely successful in Nigeria. We have applications from nearly all local government secretariat. When we came in, the president said we must create 1 million technical jobs. And we figured that for that to happen, we need to train more than 1 million people, which is why we started this program. If you go to any social media platform and you put 3MTT in it, the sort of uh, 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 testimonies that you see from the participant is something that will glad into you. And we're still pushing this. One of the programs that we're hoping to launch this year is actually a digital literacy program. The 3 MTT is a digital skills program. Mm. It's different from literacy. Our goal is that by 2027, that we can achieve a significant portion whereby about 70% of Nigerians will have digital literacy right. skills. We're, we're building this program out. We're going to be leveraging the telecommunications uh, companies to be able to spread this out. It will be free, uh, you know, short, uh, bit size uh, content that will push to people so they can learn the basics of how to operate within the digital economy. Yeah. Well, that's an important yeah. thing, isn't it? And, and just to let me ask you a double barreled question. Yeah. And I'm making it double barreled because I know you've got to run soon. Sure. We appreciate <laughs> your taking the time to be here. Mm -hmm. Is this new AI technology? Mm -hmm 
being used, for example, to track criminals and to reduce insecurity? Because, I mean, if you are, now's the time to tell us how you're doing <laughs> it. Because, I mean, many people will say they're not seeing evidence of it. That's the first half. The second half is that in terms of growing the digital space in this country, mm -hmm. you need foreign investment. Absolutely. How are you going to do that when there is little electricity, problems of insecurity generally, particularly in rural areas, and problems of cyber security specifically. I think Nigeria has always been an attractive country. If I start from the foreign direct investment mm. question, it's always been an attractive country for, for investors. When you look at the telecommunication sector in the African, on the African continent, Nigeria is the largest in terms of FDI. So what people want to see is a government that is serious about taking the right reforms, building the right foundational infrastructure. You're not going to change things in 12 months or 24 months. But, but businesses want to see that as a leader, you're taking the right decision. And that's what this president is all about, you know, doing the right things, building that foundation that can help us get to where we want to be. When I came in, I met a lot of the companies within my sector, and they gave me three lists. It's the large telecommunications company. They said, one, we want our equipment to be protected uh, because they're getting vandalized, and that, when they get vandalized, we can't provide the service. We have to spend more. Two is that we have to try and harmonize taxes. And the third one is that we've not been able to increase tariff in 10 years, which means we cannot bring in more money uh, into the market. Mm. In 2024, we did the first two. Right? You saw the tax re uh, reform that happened. We declared all telecommunications infrastructure as critical national infrastructure. The president signed this and it's been gazetted. Right? The only thing we couldn't do was the tariff one because we had to, to do extensive study. Mm. But if you go back to 2024, if you compare the foreign direct investments in 2023 to 2024, in Q1 2023, we had about $22 million there about coming to the sector, Q1 2023. Q1 2024, because of what the government was doing, we had close to $200 million. Right. By Q2, I think it went on in 2023 by just $3 million. By Q2 2024, we hit over $200 million US dollars. You know what we're saying? Now that we're able to figure out how do we increase tariff without necessarily putting heavy burden on the citizen, but also allowing the businesses to, uh, to continue to make some right. profit. We've recorded over one billion in equipment purchase for the telecommunications sector. That's so, so when people talk about quality of service, yeah. what I say is, wait, let's see what's going to start to happen in Q3. Because when they place the order for these equipment, it's going to take them about two quarters before they come in, before they install. I strongly believe that the quality of service is going to change. The other thing that this government is doing along the line of uh, critical infrastructure, two things. The president noticed that a lot of our rural areas where we have about 20 million people living are ungovernable spaces mm. because they don't have uh, connectivity. The private sector is not invested in it. And it was the president that actually requested that we must find ways to fund the installation of telecommunication towers in those areas. Now we're working on a deal that is going to invest about 7,000 telecommunication towers. We, we launched the first pilot last week in the village just outside of Abuja, close to Guagualada. No towers, no telecommunication services. In less than 12 hours of installing the services, we had over 12,000 12, minutes of calls that has been made. And we've never recorded anything less than 12,000. Since this was installed, just uh, I think it was launch commission on Thursday last week, you know, the video is online. Right. And what we're seeing is the impact. But on top of that, remember what we've been talking about, the biggest project we're actually doing in this sector is a $2 billion investment in 90,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable across the country. The government is not doing all the investment. We're doing up to 49%. We're bringing private sector in to balance that investment. That will make us to hone the third longest right. uh, fiber okay. optic cable in the whole of Africa and Nigeria. And the implication of that is that the quality of connectivity that our people will get, regardless of where they live, is going to shoot up astronomically. And, right. and we've it's seen from the World Bank that 10% increase in the quality of connectivity mm -hmm leads to about 2.5 increase in GDP. Well, it sounds very impressive. Yes. I would love to grill you further, but yes. conveniently yeah. for you, you've got to run. So. <laughs>
<laughs> I'd be more than happy to come back. No, please, please come back. I'll it's be been really to nice to talking back. to yeah. you, and your enthusiasm yeah. is infectious. Absolutely. So I hope it's translating into real sort of. It does. I always thing. encourage people. You know what you I say to people. You sound like you know what I say to people. Yeah. Fact check everything we say. No, I don't because, doubt you. Because I mean, this is I, fact. I, I it's just, not. Uh, yeah, we're I'm, not I'm just saying that your enthusiasm is infectious. Because I know the power of what I've been given, and I'm privileged to work with a president who understands how to truly, truly build a foundation for development right okay. and that's what i believe the nigeria needs at at this at this point in time nothing more than that we have to lay the foundation to be able to allow our country to move to where we should be right. not just stay as a potential okay well that music means we've got to rock <laughs> but good so to much. talk with you thank and you, thank you very you. much yeah. indeed for coming in uh, dr bosun tijani is the minister of communications innovation and digital economy thank good you. to see you thank you